Hey boys and girls, moms and dads. I'm just going to take a look at my uh, RV solar for me or not. Some battery use stuff. I uh, hope it's right because I understood it for the change. If uh, anything's wrong, please, please comment on what I uh, need to look at differently. But making a few assumptions like an efficiency of 90% and that the 250 watts is a peak and not continuous rate, I will get the following. 250 divided by 0 0.9 equals 277 peak watts. 277 divided by 12 volts equals 23 amps peak. 200 by, divided by 0 0.9 equals 220. 2 continuous watts. 222 divided by 12 equal 18.5 amps. Assuming a battery with 45 amp hour rating, 45 divided by 18.5 equal 2.4 hours of battery life. So on an average you're going to get 2.4 hours at 222 watts of a normal battery average battery. Uh, most likely a wet cell average battery. It was interesting to, to read that and I kind of took it further to see what I really want to do because I believe the little 24 I got is at least 60 amp hour battery and at 60 divided by 18.5 I get 3.2 hours of battery life. So I opted a little bit. I got another hour out of it. If I do go to a 100 amp hour battery, 100 divided by 18.5 equals 5.4 hours. Now if I can get all the way up to 200 amp hour battery set, maybe 2 6 volts or something, 200 divided by 18.5 would give me 10.8 hours of use. So at that point I'm figuring, well wow, that's uh, turn the lights off at uh, power off at 10 o'clock, turn on the batteries and uh, that should take me all through the night. At 235 amp hours divided by 18.5 equal 12.7 hours. Now, a lot of people are going with them uh, GC125 golf cart batteries to 6 volt where you put them two together and they average around 235 to 45 amp hour life in them. And it seems like that's the big kick is to to go right there for an RV, it's it should give you plenty. As you just seen, 235 divided by 18.5 equal 12.7 hours. That's a long time to have some battery life. At that amp hours and at 222 watts. Uh, on average, you keep everything off. Uh, maybe just a laptop on or a little notepad and a couple lights. It should be plenty. Obviously a 200 amp hour needed to last through the night at just 20, 222 continuous watts. Basically what I use in watt is most nice without air and microwave. Uh, 300 watts with a 200 H bank will last about 800, 8 hours. So 300 watts, you know, you're, you're looking at why are all these people buying them big ones. Well, for my full system at 800 continuous watts, that's 67 amps at 90%. For a night of 11 to 12 hours, it would take 800 amp hours of battery power. And that's a big jump from the 235 to the two battery supply. That's air, microwave, lights, TV, computer, everything. That's eight. Eight frigging six volt batteries at 70 pounds each for 560 pounds of battery weight that's a lot of uh, a lot of batteries for a little rv to be carrying around or the back of your pickup or whatever uh that's a lot of weight batteries without an ah rating usually have an rc rating so if you don't know your ah use a 0 0.6 to get ah so uh say you have a 100 rc rating Times that by 0.6, you get your amp hours, roughly. So that would be like a RC with 100 has yeah, about 60 amp hours. Um, 
nine of the solar panels needed to maintain these batteries. A 60 watt panel kit. You see them all over the place. Well, let's start with the 60s, which is exactly what I did do. I thought, why not? Let's see what it's all about. It will take 12 hours to fully charge one battery at 60 amp hour battery. Hoping that the sunlight and keep the battery, the panel out, out at dawn and all the way to dusk and you might get there. A 100 watt panel kit, which you see them all, all over the place. That's I think probably the main kit is uh, everybody's getting a 100 watt panel kit, either folding or flat. And it would lower that charge time for one battery, a 60 amp hour battery, down to 7.2 hours. A 200 watt kit would get it down to 3.6 hours. Now that's just for one normal battery. You need that much sunlight and charging. With a 200 watt kit, you still need 3.6 hours of daylight that you're going to collect power under. Approximation power is current times voltage. Energy equal power times time. So a 12 volt battery of 150 amp hours needs 1800 watts an hour of energy. 12 times 150. So a 25 watt panel would need 72 hours at full output to take care of a 150 amp hour battery. Now in other words, you're not going to just use a 25 watt panel on a 150 amp hour battery and expect to use it every single night because it's going to take three days to charge it. So now when we go messing with the real popular two 6 volt cart batteries set up with 235 amp hours, which seems to be the current rave and costing around about 250 275 300 dollars just for the, three, the two batteries. Let's see what that equals out to. We got 12 times 235 equals 2820 watts hours. Uh, with a 60 watt panel, it would take me 47 hours to get it to full charge. Now with a 100 watt panel kit, two of them golf cart pat, uh, batteries, that's going to take you 28.5 hours. 160 watt panel combo so you get a 100 watt kit and then you get a 60 watt kit combined together is going to take you 17.5 hours it's getting a little closer but that's still a long day of daylight a 200 watt panel kit now we're starting to get in the ballpark it'll take you 14.1 hours to still fully charge them batteries so anybody that tells you they got two golf cart batteries and 200 watts of solar power on their roof, uh, ask them how much sunlight did I get every day. Now a 260 watt kit, say you got a 200 watt kit and you just had that little 60 kit laying around. At that point you're down to 10.8 hours. Uh, Some place in the United States you might be able to get that. Yeah, that's a possibility. But now if you go to 300 watt panel kit, you're down to 9.5. Sounds good. But most areas only get about 5 to 6 hours of charging sun. Once you jump to 600 watt panels, 600 watt panels, you're down to 4.7 hours to charge just the two 6 volt batteries with 235 amp hours. 600 watts of power. Now I think I got all this figured out. I think that's the right formula. If anybody knows anything different, please let me know. And this is at a 90% rating. And so you're you're hoping for good skies all the time. Uh, to top all that off, it's suggested to only drain your batteries halfway or you may damage them. Many inverters will automatically kick off when a battery gets down to about... 10 9 volts to save your batteries from damage. A basic one battery at 60 AH will take a 160 watt panel setup to maintain in 4.7 hours, about average sun time for many. And as shown above, would be useless after 3.2 hours of energy at 250 watts. 
But it's all cool in theory. Uh, use. We ain't got nothing else. I'm, I'm totally for solar. Uh, I just wish all the numbers would jive better and the prices would come down better. So although solar sounds cool, I actually need a RV trailer that can haul around 600 watts of solar panels to maintain a daily usage of only 800 watts. I have one of the smallest trailers out there, Bass produce stick trailers out there. I used a minimum energy, and yes, with everything going and me being as comfy as possible, that's why we did get the trailer, right? TV, digital, antenna, fridge, computer, microwave, the little 5,000 BTU air conditioner. LED lights, occasional water pump. This is what I would need on a daily basis. Come 2015 season, for around $800, $900, you can get those six 100-watt panels, and prices keep dropping. A good solar controller, so you need, so you don't cook your batteries or your panels, runs about 30 bucks for a PWM to 200 for an MPPT, then an inverter from 50 bucks for an 800 watt Cobra all the way up to 200 bucks for a pure sin wave at 2,000 water. Uh, so roughly around $1,100, $1,200 when it's all said and done, an average cost price with cables and everything else included. Uh, not a controller, you got PWM and you got MPPT. Today it's now favored to MPPT. Why MPPT? Most multi-stage charge controllers are pulse width moderation, modulation, excuse me. Recommending using one of at least of these designs. The newer maximum power point tracking controllers are even better. To match the output of a solar panels to the battery voltage to ensure maximum charge. For example, uh, even though your solar panel is rated at 100 watts, you won't get to full 100 watts unless the battery is at optimum voltage. Uh, the power watts is always equal to volts times amps, or power equals... E times I. With a regular charge controller, if your batteries are low, it's say uh, 12.4 volts, then your 100 watt solar panel rated at 6 amps at 16.5 volts. 6 amps times 16.5 volts equal 11, well, 100 watts. Will only charge at 6 amps times 12.4 volts or just 75 watts. You just lost 25% of your capacity. The MPPT controller compensates for the lower battery voltage by delivering closer to 8 amps into the 12.4 battery, maintaining the full power of a 100 watt solar panel. 100 watts equal 12.4 volts times 8 amps equals 100. And then it trickles down to protect your service. So there, it's it's just like an MPPT would be more like a stronger charger, battery charger. You're buying a bigger battery charger. You're going to get all that. So that's why you go to MPPT, where you don't waste your voltage. PWM was to protect your batteries, and it, it works rather well. It protects your batteries, but it, it also wastes some of the solar. So how big? The formula is panels, short circuit current by number of panels in parallel times the safety factor. The safety factor suggested is about 1.25 for your ray short circuit current. So say a 60 watt panel at 3.82 short circuit specs. 3.82 times 1 times 1.25 equal 4.77 or roughly 5 amp controller will be okay. Uh, if you do add two panels, you're going to equal 10 amp controller because you're going to double all that. 
a 100 watt panel averages 6.32 6 6.32 times 1 times 1.25 safety margin equals 7.9 so you're up there at the 10 amp controller if you double that now you're going to need a 20 amp controller 7.9 7.9 obviously 20 amp controller is needed uh, okay where was I this is so much mumbo jumbo uh, it gets you confused for a while till you start understanding it hopefully I'm understanding it right uh, if I'm understanding it wrong please please let me know what I did wrong so to justify the cost remember a good Honda or Yamaha generator inverter at 1600 watts will run you basically the same and still need gas to run it uh, of course, you can buy a cheaper version. You can buy a Champion 2000, cheaper in price only. There's still very good inverter generators, and they're at 1,700 watts, and they run about 450 to 500. And you can piggyback them to make 3,000 watts, and still in the same range at 3,000 watts needed. Of course, you still need gas. Basically, if you already have a generator, keep it handy. Your RV probably has a built-in charger for the batteries anyways. You can buy a 3, 6, 12 amp charger for around 30, 40 bucks. Just saying it's something you could add to your generator and also boost your batteries that way. It's all the way you wish to do it. To me, solar is a nice alternative when boondocking at pure basic with no gas at sight. Uh, but we'll, while gas is available, you just cannot beat a generator to top off your batteries for the night. Unless you're thinking the shit hits the fan case and prepping's case. At which point, some will come along during the rampage of survival with a $150 gun and take it all away from you anyways. So, that'll get you back to the basics that I'm used to. Uh, just grab a hammock. A backpack and your hiking boots uh, and keep them close by please anybody got any comments or anything on this let me know down in the comment section uh, I, I hope I got all this figured out right and uh, I hope maybe I helped others figure it out right all these formulas and listings should be right down there inside the uh, about section and we'll see where it goes from there. I'm definitely going to have solar. I just don't know how much solar. And I will always have my generator. Uh, thanks for watching. And hope to see you again real soon. Hit subscribe. Say hello. Later, man.